Hello! Welcome to episode 247 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name is Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 20th of April. So welcome everybody. I hope you've had a lovely crafty time since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today I have some knitting, some sewing, I have some punch needle, I have some <laughs> I got a gadget, a blast from the past, which is a knitting one, some information on my shop update, and a little appearance from Jensen at the end of the podcast. So we've got make-alongs on Ravelry and on Instagram, and I'll leave details of those in the description bar down below, and I'll pop some hashtags on the screen as well. So we've got three, Craft 20 a day, the Retro Mail, and the Spring Shawl Along. And I also have a prize to draw, for this month's email subscriber giveaway so the winner is well this this month's winner is just an email address so it begins with sim so if your email begins with sim go and check your mailbox and i have sent you an email um, and if you just give me your full name and postal address i'll get that prize sent out to you so i'll i draw a prize every month for the email subscriber list and if you go over to my website scroll down to the bottom of the page pop your email in there and you're in for a chance of winning um, you normally win the yarn clubs of that. So let's go on with the knitting, shall we? I have a finished object to show you. These are the most gorgeous, squishy slippers. So these are the Cozy Toesies by Lisa Chemery. And how squashy are they? So they're knitted in a chunky yarn. And this is the Oceanic colourway in Jameson Shetland Marl. And there's 120 metres to a ball. And I basically had this much left so not doing too bad i wasn't doing yarn chicken but i've got a little bit left over i thought i could use that little bit of leftover for punch needle as well which i'm into at the moment so these are going to be for adam i knitted the first adult size i think i followed what the instructions said for the length of your foot and they fit really nice they're nice and snug so they're not too loose and baggy and i'm really pleased about how they fit with the elastic around the cuff so I did actually video me putting the elastic in the cuff of the second slipper. So I will pop that footage in here so that you can see how I did it. So I thought I'd just show you how I sew the elastic in the cuff of the Cozy Toesies slippers. So this is a pattern by Lisa Chemery and I'll leave a link to it in the description bar down below. So the second slipper, I've turned it inside out so that I can sew the cuff on the sort of outside with it being inside out. I have made myself a little loop of elastic. I've made sure that I've got the right length. I've put it around my ankle, cut it to length, and then I've just stitched using a zigzag stitch on my machine to make the elastic into a ring. And I'm gonna put that over the top of the cuff And pull the end out which I'm going to use to sew it in. So this is now going to be folded over and I've already threaded my yarn onto a needle so the pattern actually says to leave your yarn a certain length so that you can sew it in as you go. This is a paid for pattern so I won't go into any of the other details but I just thought it might be handy to show you how I sew this in. So I then go to the inside and scoop one of the pearl bumps on there and then scoop a knit stitch off the cuff. And I'm just going to go around and do that all the way around, scooping into each of the pearl bumps and then each of the knit stitches. It is a little bit difficult to see with this darker yarn um, but as long as you've attached both of the sides your elastic will be secure. So I'm going to work my way all the way around the edge and then I'll show you how I finish it off at the end. So there we are, that is attached on the inside and then I'm just going to sew my ends in. I'll just do a duplicate stitch on the garter, on the garter stitch inside to just sew those ends in. 
So I'm actually spanning my stitches over two rows just because it's easier um, to for, sort of find the stitches. Um, but I find that still ties the ends in really nicely but leaving it stretchy because you've got that extra thread going around in the same orientation as the other sort of stitches. So there we go, I just need to trim that edge off. So the elastic I used was 0.7 millimetres wide, but you could use any sort of elastic as long as it's not too wide to go in the little gap. So these are for Adam. So I'm gonna get him to do a little model so that you can see what they look like on his feet. So what do you think of your new slippers, Adam? Yeah, lovely and cozy. Give us a twirl then. So I didn't do the grippy stuff on the bottom called sock stop, just because we've got a lot of carpets in our house anyway, um, and it just they just look nicer without it on. Um, so there we go, nice warm toes for the rest of the year, even though we're getting onto spring weather. <laughs> So somebody actually emailed me and asked me about why I would choose a more rustic non-superwash yarn to knit slippers with. Now mainly it's because the sort of non-superwash more rustic yarns are actually a lot warmer and these are for Adam and he, I wanted him to have the coziest feet because he's always got cold feet so a more rustic yarn um, would be more appropriate to make him some slippers with and also I thought that a, a nice rustic yarn might be a little more hard wearing it's quite a rough yarn so I wouldn't choose this necessarily to go around my neck or something but for feet absolutely perfect so my next project i've got to show you is my twists and turns shawl now you'll be sick of seeing this because i've been knitting it for ages <laughs> but i've almost finished i've done the two side bits here um there's some wiggly cables down the side and some stripey so i've done both of those now finish those off it is curling up quite a bit though um, but I'm hoping that once it's blocked, that'll stay pretty neat and flat. So the things that I've got to do to it now are there's some I-cord detail that go in these antler cables, which I'm going to add. I left these until sort of the last bit because I thought I feel like they're a bit more of just a detail finishing touch rather than the main finishing of the shawl. So those will be both sides. And then there is a section that is underneath this zigzag bit. Now, I didn't like the full section that Stephen included in the pattern, so I'm just going to do, I think it's like um, a rib just around the edge, um, just to finish it off, because I think it needs something at the bottom there. But I think that if it sticks out a lot more than the rest of the shawl, it'll feel a little bit unbalanced to me. So that's what I'm going to do. But I am really pleased um, with how this has come out so far. So again, this is the Twist and Turns Shawl by Stephen West, and it's in my golden brown set of colours that I designed specifically for this shawl, and you can buy the kit on my website. Um, and this one is in MCN, but you've got the choice of MCN or the normal merino and nylon base on fingering weight yarn. So you need two skeins of two skeins each of these two colours and then one skein of this little sort of pop of a different colour. Um, if you did want the colours the other way round I'm very happy to dye them in that way if you wanted sort of the blue in the place uh, of the sort of mustardy colour. Um, I'm very happy to do that as long as I've already sort of designed the colours. But there we go, that is my twists and turns shawl. This is the back of it not quite so neat on the back because you've got the cables and things but I think because it's a lovely wide shawl it'll be nice and easy to sort of wear and to keep on. My favourite bit is the stripy bits which are all at the front if I wear it like this so I think I'm going to love wearing it. So hopefully that will be completely finished and blocked by next week, fingers crossed. <laughs> So that is all the knitting that I've got to show you, but I do have some sewing to show you. So I showed you last week or maybe the week before that I'd started some EPP and I haven't done loads on this, but I, show, I thought I'd show you my little bit of progress. So this is the Seven Sisters block. It's by A Little Crispy on Etsy. I bought the pattern from Etsy and there's these tiny little pieces at the top here. 
um, that I'm putting all the way around so I'm working outwards on this one. We'll pop a picture of what it's supposed to look like at the end but I think I'm getting there slowly. These are all joined now and I'm on to the tiny little pieces on the outside. They're not actually as hard to sort of hold on to as I thought they would be these tiny little wedges um, and this is the six inch version so there's a four inch six inch and I think it's a nine and a twelve inch version so if you didn't want to do it this small there are ones that are quite a bit bigger so this is six inch so if you did the 12 inch that would be twice as big so that would be much easier to handle if, if you do have trouble with small pieces so there we go i have done a little bit of progress on that but i am really enjoying it and it's something that i can take along to my quilt group so the pattern is a pdf pattern that you can purchase from etsy and you can print outs for all the different size blocks which is wonderful i'm going to turn mine into a pin cushion i think so that is my sewing section but i do have some needle punch this week I'm a bit obsessed. <laughs> so after I'd had the Simple Crafted Life kit to make this elephant ear needle punch, I had some leftover fabric that was actually for the test piece. And I'd done some hearts on it and I thought, well, I really want to finish this off just to make it a piece that's finished. Um, and so I did. So I didn't sort of plan on making anything specific. I just played around with it. So I had a bit of fun. I did it so that the hearts are uh, the sort of reverse side of the needle punch so they stick out and then I did the the rest of it so that it's the opposite way round so that the hearts stick out just messing around really so actually the thread that I used for these three pieces here was all in the kit for the other for the other needle punch um, but I ran out of the cream then so I just had some grey Aran weight yarn in my stash that I finished it off with so I think that looks quite cute it's it could have looked better if I'd have actually planned ahead a little bit but I had fun making it and then I finished it off the same way with a piece of felt on the back so to finish this I needed to buy a new hoop um, use some of my grey yarn in my stash and also use some felt from my stash because there was only enough um, fabric in the kit to do this one to finish it off um, but I'm really pleased I was able to make a second project with some of the kit contents so that's what I've been doing um, this weekend um, but I do have some confessions that are related to needle punch so um in terms so i did make another purchase from simple crafted life and that's the card um which included some more of these wonderful hoops which are actually going to be my gadget in a minute which i'll explain um, and i also ordered some cream yarn in a really chunky size and some some fabric that is for um, embroidery thread needle punch so it's a bit of a mixture of things but then I did an order as well from the modern crafter which was for another one of these thicker hoops so I can make a third one to match the leafy one and the J that I showed you on I think it was last week's podcast and then I ordered some more of the, the light green and darker green to do something that sort of ties in with those three so I had those and I also bought some fabric from the Modern Crafter as well. So that's their card, the Modern Crafter. So I bought two fabrics that are for the sort of chunky yarn to use the needle punch on. This one is for sort of just to, to mount in embroidery hoops. But this one I got is for um, making a cushion cover. So I've got an idea to do a cushion cover with Jensen's name on it. So I think I might use this fabric. So I am stocked up with things for needle punch. And then I bought a couple of these um, little hoops and one that I used for the heart needle punch um, from Lovecrafts. And I also bought from Lovecrafts some of the textile fabric glue for needle punch as well. So I thought if I'm gonna be making a cushion cover, I might need to sort of glue the back so that little fingers can't pull the yarn out. <laughs> But I'm going to test this first to see if I like using it. Um, but it's just somewhere, I saw a little YouTube video that was a tutorial on needle punch. And they said they used something like this. So I bought some to try it out. And these two things were from Love Crafts. I'll leave links to the three shops that I've purchased sort of needle punch things from um, in the description bar down below. And I made another purchase. And it was for this book. A lovely person messaged me after I showed this sewing case and they said that it was from this book. 
so I went ahead and purchased it and I love this case so this case is where I've been keeping um, my my English paper piece in it and to take it to my quilt group um, I'll show you that a little bit more I'll take that out of it so it's got a little place with you can see through zip pocket little pockets here which I've been sticking my English paper piece in a little pin cushion a little sort of built-in booklet for putting your needles and then another pocket this side and it folds up inside like that and I just loved it so this one was made um, by one of the lovely ladies that went to the stitching retreat to buy um, Suffolk socks and that was Emma so thank you Emma I was able to purchase this but thanks to the lovely person that messaged um, after I showed it on the last video I think or maybe the video before I've been able to purchase this so it's called stitched sewing organizers by Anila Huey and I'll leave a link to it in the description bar down below but it's got obviously the pattern that I really wanted but there's a number of other things as well such as pin cushions um, and little boxes as well which I thought was quite fun to make so it's something that there are quite a few things that I want to do out of this um, so it's a lovely book and there's a really nice different type of um, sewing organiser as well so lots of lovely things in there um, so hopefully I'll have a go at um, making one of these as well lovely for gifts as well um, to put your little sewing bits and bobs in so there we go that is my confessions for this week a bit excessive I'm afraid because we've obviously got a new craft <laughs> So my next section is gadget and it is related to the hoops that I just mentioned. So I previously had the kit from Simple Crafted Life which included this one and it has so it has a little groove on the edge of the hoop so that when you put it together it grips the needle punch so much better so that you don't have to keep tightening up your fabric and I just thought I was wowed by how good it was so I've bought two more sizes of the hoops um, they're different different colours for different sizes which is really cool and these are all from Simple Crafted Life so this one was with the kit that I had and then I've just purchased these two separately so the sizes I purchased were 25.4 centimetres and this one was 20.3 centimetres and I thought that that'd be handy to have a little set of three so I've got um, I've got different sizes to do needle punch in and not only needle punch actually but I thought that these would be good for embroidery as well because quite often I find that I have to readjust the fabric anyway um, so there we go really really pleased with how these work and I can't wait to get started on more needle punch and embroidery using them so my next section is blast from the past and as you can see I'm wearing my batad cowl now this wasn't that long ago when I completed this but I wanted to talk to you about how I've been wearing this around the house so the batad cowl you normally see the pictures of people wearing it sort of like this over the shoulder but actually I found that I've been wearing it around the house a lot when it's been a bit chilly like this because it really stays on my shoulders really well with the shortest part at the front and when you've got a little bit of a chilly around the back of your neck when there's a bit of a draft in the house this has been wonderful so this is the Batad Cowl by Stephen West and it is knitted in two of my own hand dyed yarn colourways in two of the yarn clubs for this year so these were January and February this one was A View to a Kill and this one was Jewel of the Nile um, so that it's the music from the movies action adventure edition so they were based on movies um, that have got songs on from the sort of 80s and 90s so these yarns won't be available until at least next year I'm afraid so you can wear it um, on the side like I said or with all the fabric at the front of course but I do find if you're walking around the house with this on it does sort of gape like this and doesn't stay around your neck um, but around the other way wonderful so I like to just have it so that the, this part is at the front you could of course make um, a version where you cast on less stitches and do a smaller neck hole um, but it fits perfectly on the shoulders like this so the next section is my shop update so we've got the may yarn clubs coming out tomorrow that's the 21st of april at 7 p.m gmt 
So I mentioned last week that all my international orders will be tracked now. It's just standard tracked, so it'll be the same sort of speed. You'll be able to see where your order is. So if it's taking a little bit longer, you can check. And the UK parcels are just standard, but you do have the option to do tracked if you want to. Tracked ones will take a couple of days to ship um, because I need to travel a distance to actually go to the post office um, to go and take them specifically. So I wanted to mention that Advents and the Project Bag and Yarn Sets Alternatives are on the website now. That's the theme of Rockin' Robin. Um, those will be on the website until they sort of run out, but there'll be another batch in August. The 1st of August, there'll be another batch come out. So if you want to save up, um, there'll be another batch there. So I also wanted to mention that I'm popping some of these pink little Notions boxes in the shop. The other colourways that I had before had like this mould effect on it, um, but these ones are just like a baby pink if you wanted those. But they're the same layout inside with the six little compartments there and the two little compartments there. These ones this side are big enough to put the little higher higher snips in, which is handy. Um, but those will be in the shop tomorrow, 21st of April at 7pm GMT. And I think that's all for the shop update. It's now over to you, Jensen. So today, Jensen is wearing my Soundwave cowl that I'd knitted for me. But you've got it, haven't you? <laughs> Are you cheeky? So this is a Soundwave cowl patterned by me and it's in my own hand dyed yarn in the Never Ending Story colourway. And I'm finding it really useful actually, even though it's made for an adult, to pop it round Jensen's neck yeah so that it doesn't fall off like a blanket and it keeps his neck nice and warm so thank you very much jensen he's playing with my camera case here um he couldn't resist bless him so thank you very much jensen oh before i go this cardigan is the antler cardigan by tin can knits and he's all cozy up yeah. even though it is sort of starting to be spring it's a little bit chilly and a little bit windy so thank you very much jensen You're going to wave goodbye. Say bye-bye. Wave bye-bye. Say bye-bye. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. I shall see you in next week's video. Bye.